And that fellow beep chapel apple citizen is why you should vote Higgins McRoy for re-election. In addition to my name recognition and superficially appealing personality, here are some things to that damn to councilman. To him. That damn Higgins McRoy. Oh, I'll show him something good with my military Secondly, tactical homing bowling ball. Oh, I'll knock all those teeth out of him. Ah! Survey about public opinion about the idea about passing a resolution about climate change ah! by 2050. What's a seagull doing here this now. time of year? I would like to introduce oh, this thing I brought a plan to the president of the Narcoleptic Community with Association. With my blowdart, with a special poison. There's no turning back from this one. Oh. Oh, he's, Down to he's gone to sleep. Ah, oh, that's a shame. He was an upstairs. Well, uh, time for plan C. Lastly, I will do something vaguely related to health insurance. And, uh, and now I have a, a special surprise for you folks. I present to you this sample of bulletproof asphalt that will be installed as part of my infrastructure bill. Uh, I think someone uh, shot at me. My god, uh, there's the assassin there! Uh, oh god, Jesus! Oh god, This guy must have been a professional. He's left nothing behind. Oh well, let's go meet with that politician. Thank you for meeting us here, Councilman. As defenders of the public, your safety is important to us. If you really cared about my safety, why don't you stop that lunatic from shooting at me? Well, we didn't know he was going to do that. But we hadn't received any credible tips about it. It's your job to know about these kinds of things before they happen. I can't believe this city spends so much on money on your department. Our budget is up to Commissioner Jordan. We don't have any say. What was the latest thing I saw in your budget proposal? Ribosomal antioxycarbonic ion serum or some such thing? Anyways, the point is that you two chumps have failed me and failed Beep Trapalopolis, which is why I've decided to bring in a private detective on my own. Good what? Sup, producers. Ben here will be in charge of tracking down the assassin and bringing him to justice. This is preposterous. That man isn't part of any organized judicial department. He's not bound by any ethical code of conduct. There's no way to ensure that he will bring true justice to this case. Not bound by bureaucratic red tape, more like. Yeah, you tell him, big man. Feel free to try and compete, but I don't think you boys have it in you to go up against Ben. Well, we carefully reviewed the crime scene, as is proper protocol. And next, we're broadening our search to nearby CCTV footage. 
The future private detective won't have access to, may I add? Don't worry, McRoy, I got your back. I've already got a solid lead. And I'll have this assassin behind bars before these two clowns even have a clue. What? Whoa, what? What? Who did this? Someone has replaced my sugar packets with salt. Ben, we must make an arrest. Um, yeah, sure. Let's maybe focus on the assassin first, and then we can revisit the case later. Well, someone will have to pay for this serious transgression. I want a 10-year minimum sentence. 10 years! Well, McCullough, we can't get shown up by this private Ben investigator fellow. What have, you, what have we got on these CCTV footages? Look at that. Do you see that man loitering around the alleyway nearby where the crime took place? I'll bet he's a drug dealer who we can intimidate into giving us his eyewitness account of the assassin. Excellent induction, McClellan. Quick, let's get down there before Ben can beat us to the punch. So is there anything else you can tell me about this tattoo that he had? Yeah, no, it was like a totally, like, totally unique one. Like, you, like, you'd only find it, like, you know, that one place where you'd always find it. But yeah, anyway, so like, the other day I was like, talking to my friend, you know, he's like, he's got a new car. He just, he just got it, because his old one, he crashed it, and he crashed it in the river, you know, he just like went right off the bridge. Like, those guardrails they put on there, like, they're totally just for show. Like, they to totally don't even, like, stop any cars. Anyways, yeah, so he ended up in the river. He got hypothermia, but I guess he's got some sort of weird gene mutation where he, he's immune to hypothermia, and he can just raise his body temperature on command, which is totally awesome. But anyways, his car was fucked. So he got he a new one, and it was like a new, it was like the newest Tesla one. It was like the those like weird like Tesla like truck things that were like they're supposed to be bulletproof, but they're like totally not. You can just like take a shit on like the front of it and it'll, like break the freaking windshield, you know, man. But anyways, he got one of those. And apparently, like the gas mileage is pretty good, so like that's a thing. But I don't know if I want that car because it looks like it like came right out of just like a terrible like 60s sci-fi movie with like a $120,000 budget. But like most of that budget just went to like straight into the director's pocket because he was just like a freaking like alcoholic, you know, and he just like didn't even care. Uh, like you, you know, you know what I'm talking about, man. Like those type of those exact kind of 60s movies. Anyways. But like, yeah, he's like driving that thing around, and like, he was just like driving around, and he just sees like, like there's like a seagull with three wings, man. Like, can you believe it? Like, I've never heard of that thing before, but apparently. My, my friend, he just driving around his Tesla truck, he just saw that freaking seagull, like, just flapping all around. Like, I don't even know how that would work. Like, I mean, I don't even know how, like, aerodynamics work. Like, I don't even know how an airplane flies. Like, do you know how an airplane flies? I read online that scientists don't even know how an airplane flies, but somehow it does. Like, that's just, like, a freaking miracle, man. Like, I don't even know. Like, how, did, how does that even happen? Because it's, like, made of metal. Though I guess they make ships out of metal and they float, and that's pretty cool. I never really thought about that too much. Yeah, like, how does that even work? Like, is that something to do with, like, buoyancy, I guess? With, like, the air inside of it is, like, displacing, like, the weight of the metal that is made of the hull? But I just, I just don't know. Like, that just seems, like, really sketch. Like, why would you even go out in the ocean in, like, a cruise ship? Like, cruise ships are just like, so sketchy, man. Like, they've got, they're infested with rats and they've got diseases everywhere and stuff. Like, you know, just, like, it's like so dangerous too. They're like they're way too top heavy. They'll just like flip over and sink and capsize and like you know like how can you even like hey, how can you even plan for that? Like you're stuck in there in like the spa or whatever. They're trying to keep you happy. Hey you! Freeze, Freeze right where you are. <laughs> We're taking you in, drug dealer. We saw on the CCTV footage that you saw who the assassin was, and now you're, we're gonna take you in. and You're gonna tell us. Get out of here, private investigator. This isn't your job. It's ours. We'll get him! Let's get him. Come on. Let's get him. Get back foot.
Let me give you a hand. That's the age we didn't want to do it again. Make the bird. Here, I'll help you out. You got this, Inspector. Come on. Come on. Come on, boy. You got this. You got this. So, drug dealer, why don't you tell us where the assassin went? We know you saw him. Huh. You're not going to talk? We're putting you under arrest. Freaking think us scientists don't know how airplanes work. I'll tell you how airplanes work. You get locked up in prison till you tell us where that assassin went. How do you like that, huh? Like that? Okay. Why don't you take a slide down this half pipe, huh? Well, that was a bust. I know. I thought we had him for sure when you used that ancient interrogation technique. Me too. Uh, I thought I had aligned the ritual circle properly, but after he started levitating and reciting my social security number in Latin, uh, I knew it was a lost cause. Well, let's re-examine the CCTV footage. We can give it another look with my new zoom and enhancement science machine. To the zoom and enhance machine! Thank you for agreeing to meet with us, Ben. Uh, I know there were bitter rivals and all. The primal opponents sworn to resist each other to our dying breaths, but frankly, we need your help. If we don't work together to stop this devious assassin, he will surely strike again. It's the mayor's life on the line here! Look, it's not that I need your help too or anything. It will just be less work for me to do it this way. Plus, you guys are civil servants, so you can't legally accept a cut of the bounty. Um, what evidence do you got? We were able to use our forensic science to identify this tattoo of an octopus on the assassin from the CC's TV footage. Interesting. Does it mean anything to you? I don't know about any cellophods, but I did find the baseball glove he dropped. My god, it makes perfect sense! The beat Trapalopolis Atlantic Pygmy Octopuses! Our local minor league baseball team! The assassin must be a member! No, if we only knew which position he played. Hmm. Ben, did you get anything useful out of that witness? Oh my god, he would not shut up. He went into excruciating detail about everything even vaguely related to how the assassin fled. He even mentioned how one of the assassin's arms was slightly longer than the other. He just kept going on about how- Great Scott! How could I have missed it from the CCTV footage? Dominant arm elongation is a textbook symptom of medical epicoidal epiphystosis. The assassin has pitchers on. The power of teamwork has saved us. Quick, let's round up this pesky pitcher and bring him to justice. Guys, the Beep Tropolopolis Atlantic Pygmy Octopuses are playing the Montpelier Green Mountain Boys in 15 minutes. And the mayor's hitting the opening pitch. Welcome, folks, to this season's opening minor league baseball game. As is customary, our mayor will be hitting the opening ceremonial pitch. If he can score a touchdown, the city will donate two million dollars to charity. Are you ready, folks? Also, since we're running a little bit behind schedule, the mayor will be doing this at the same time as we sing our National City Municipal Anthem. All rise, remove your hats, and remain hidden under your seats. This goes out to all the Beep Tropolopolis citizens. This is your National Anthem. I heard the treasure. Here are the steps to thank God. Music not related to Now it looks like this. Stripes fall forth and smaller.
Trust is strong, but it can be demonstrated. You should see him fall. I almost forgot. Based on the indentation on his glove, the assassin must have a single grenade, and he's probably going to wait until the last pitch to throw it. When the mayor whiffs again, it'll explode and kill him with the catcher's collateral. Hurry! Mr. Councilman, Mr. Councilman, do you have anything to say to your door and fans? I just love poverty. I mean, I just love getting rid of poverty. <laughs> Go. Go team. Well, Dr. McClellan, that Ben fellow turned out to be a pretty nice dude. Agreed. Davis, how would you fight crime if the crime you were fighting was you? Ah, oh, very interesting proposition. Uh, I think I definitely have to begin with just a, an uppercut to the jaw. And of course, I, 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 my reflexes are like lightning, so I would be able to block. And then I'd swing it around and catch myself like this. And the old, the old knee lock, but then that's not enough to stop me. So I'd be able to break right out of that. And then I'd come back in and catch, swing it around, but I'd get myself and jump like this. But then I'd have the ability to knee myself in the head like this. Then I'd go around. And then. <laughs> 